Hello my fellow warriors of life, can you believe it? While I was in Utah this past weekend, my channel hit 400 subscribers! What? <laughs> I can't believe it! Um, so I just wanted to do something fun and we're going to read various compliments from literature that I think are great because all of you deserve a compliment. And I'll also include video compliments from famous films, so we'll see what happens. I just want to thank you all for being here. It's pretty cool to think that each and every one of my subscribers at one point actively made the decision to subscribe to my channel, which is bizarre because I wasn't doing this to get subscribers, it's just been something fun that I like to do. And without further ado, let's showcase you guys because you're the reason I'm here. So here we go! A quick side note is that the subscribers in this video are all people who did not private their settings, so any subscribers who are privated, I am sorry, but I was not able to include you, but I love you nonetheless, so... Pay me a compliment, Melvin. I need one. You are so good looking. I like myself better when I'm with you. My... cousin-in-law, whose heart is bigger than his brain. I appreciate that, Clark. Every atom of your flesh is as dear to me as my own. In pain and sickness, it would still be dear. His heart is an ocean that's inside a bigger ocean. For years, he's been watching us with his supervision, saving us with his super strength, and caring for us with his super heart. I would rather share one lifetime with you than face all the ages of this world alone. She is a friend of my mind. She gather me, man. The pieces I am, she gather them and give them back to me in all the right order. You give me premature ventricular contractions. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You have such a pretty face, you should be on a Christmas card. Being in a relationship, that's something you choose. Being friends, that's just something you are. But I do pick you. We've been friends too long to pick. But if we could pick, I'd pick you. You're a funny guy. Nora, I like you. That's why I'm going to kill you last. You're all the good things wrapped into one good thing. I wish I knew how to quit you. Promise me, you'll always remember that you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. And boy, that's just a straight shooter with upper management written all over him. You are the friend to whom my soul is attached, as to its better half. You are dearer to me than language has the power of telling. I'm scared of walking out of this room and never feeling the rest of my whole life the way I feel when I'm with you. I have a million things to talk to you about. All I want in this world is you. I want to see you and talk. I want the two of us to begin everything from the beginning. Hey, I love your hair, don't ever touch it! In case you ever foolishly forget, I am never not thinking of you. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but you have the most beautiful feet. As I got to know you, I began to realize that beauty was the least of your qualities. I became fascinated by your goodness. I was drawn in by it. I didn't understand what was happening to me, and it was only when I began to feel actual, physical pain every time we left the room that it finally dawned on me. I was in love for the first time in my life. Clever girl. I know you aren't perfect, but it's a person's imperfections that make them perfect for someone else. Sometimes you're so beautiful it just gags me. You have a beautiful laugh, like the promise of tomorrow. You smell terrific. If you live to be a hundred, I want to live to be a hundred minus one day, so I never have to live without you. Stinking like a dog over here. I like the way you stink. You are my sympathy, my better self. Don't be ridiculous. You're not handicapped. You're, what do they call that? Exceptional. You have been my friend. That in itself is a tremendous thing. 
I love you even when you're sick and you look disgusting. In vain I have struggled. It will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. I love the way you laugh, and I love the way your hair smells, and I, I love it that sometimes for no reason you're late for shul, and I don't care that you're bow-legged, and I don't care that you're bilingual. I've never had a moment's doubt. I love you. I believe in you completely. You are my dearest one, my reason for life. You're very generous. You're kind to strangers and children. And when you stand in the snow, you look like an angel. You are my heart. My life, my one and only thought. I want all of you, forever, you and me, every day. <laughs> I cannot let you burn me up, nor can I resist you. No mere human can stand in a fire and not be consumed. You complete me. I can't sleep, I can't eat, I can't do anything but think about him. At night I dream of him, all day I wait to see him. And when I do see him, my heart turns over, and I think I will faint with desire. You are my only reason to stay alive. We've loved each other so long, I've never been a man and not loved her. I see you're drinking 1%. Is that because you think you're fat? Because you're not. You could be drinking whole if you wanted to. You are sunlight through a window, which I stand in warmed, my darling. Because you're like the coolest person I've ever met, and, and you don't even have to try, you know? Did my heart love till now? Forswear it, sight! For I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. You're so wise. But like a miniature Buddha, covered in hair. She is a mortal danger to all men. She is beautiful without knowing it, and possesses charms that she's not even aware of. She is like a trap set by nature, a sweet perfumed rose in whose petals Cupid lurks in ambush. Anyone who has seen her smile has known perfection. She instills grace in every common thing, and divinity in every careless gesture. Venus in her shell was never so lovely, and Diana in the forest never so graceful as my lady when she strides through Paris. I freaking worship you, man! Doubt thou the stars are fire, doubt that the sun doth move, doubt truth to be a liar, but never doubt I love. I think you show great town. Her love was as entire as a child's, and though warm as summer, it was fresh as spring. You know what's wrong with you. No, what? Nothing. You and I, it's as though we have been taught to kiss in heaven and sent down to earth together to see if we know what we were taught. I like you very much, just as you are. I have waited for this opportunity for more than half a century to repeat to you once again my vow of eternal fidelity and everlasting love. It's hard for me to say these kind of things because that ain't my way. But if I could just unzip myself and step out and be someone else, I want to be you. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. You can be my wingman anytime. You're my hero. You're my knight in shining armor. Look at that sweet smile. Do you want to talk about physical strength? Do you want to talk about sheer muscle? Do you want to talk about the Olympian ideal? You are a god! Now, I'm not going to deny that I was aware of your beauty, but the point is, this has nothing to do with your beauty. As I got to know you, I began to realize that beauty was the least of your qualities. I became fascinated by your goodness. I was drawn by it. I was drawn in by it. I didn't understand what was happening to me. And it was only when I began to feel actual physical pain every time you left the room that it finally dawned on me. I was in love for the first time in my life. I knew it was hopeless, but that didn't matter to me. And it's not that I want to have you. All I want is to deserve you. Tell me what to do. Show me how to behave. I'll do anything you say. You got more grit, fire, and guts than any woman I've ever met. You know, you're, you're God's answer to Joe. 
you know? You would have ended all, all argument between them. I mean, he would have pointed to you and said, you know, I do a lot of terrible things, but I can also make one of these, you know? All this gladness in life, all honest pride in doing my work in the world, all this keen sense of being I owe to her. And it doubles the gladness, it makes the pride glow. It sharpens the sense of existence till I hardly know if it is pain or pleasure, to think that I owe it to one. Nay, you must, you shall hear. To one whom I love as I do not believe man ever loved a woman before. She's a babe. She's a robo-babe. In Latin, she would be called Babia Majora. If she were a president, she'd be Abraham Lincoln. It has made me better loving you. It has made me wiser and easier and brighter. I used to want a great many things before, and to be angry that I did not have them. Theoretically, I was satisfied. I flattered myself that I limited my wants. But I was subject to irritation. I used to have morbid, sterile, hateful fits of hunger, of desire. Now I really am satisfied, because I can't think of anything better. You are my sun, my moon, my starlit sky. Without you, well in darkness. You're the most ravishing creature that I've ever seen in my life. I'm madly in love with you, and it's not because of your brains or your personality. It's because you're beautiful, inside and out. What are you doing? Checking your label, just as I thought. Made in heaven. You know, it's dangerous for you to be here in the frozen food section. Why is that? Because you could melt all this stuff. <gasps> There's a magnificence that comes out of your eyes and your voice and the way you stand there and the way you walk. You're lit from within. Taryn. You've got fires banked down in you. Hearth fires and holocausts. Sleeves, they're real big. Thank you.